Good morning, folks. Many of you will recognize the background image at wavechronicle.com. They've posted my Starwater article last night. Now, there's no substitute for Xavier's animations combined with the descriptions in the video, but as the written words come, I feel very happy about what I tried to communicate here. Website members will find it a pleasant summary. It's a sneak peek into the Starwater series for everyone else. And at the bottom of the article, they put a link to all the series citations where you can go find every piece of information yourself if you're so inclined. Again, check it out on wavechronicle.com. Scientists putting this volcano on alert after an ash cloud yesterday followed 36 hours of increased seismicity in the region. This is the measurement mission's close-up of the South Indian Ocean storm. It's got no land to disrupt his dance, and come to think of it, that's a good thing. Shifting more than a thousand miles east has us looking at one of the warmest places on the planet right now. Looking past the temperature to the pressure drive, you should notice the lows in northern Australia and another convergence about to crest Tasmania. Those will be in play today. The system surges continue in Europe. Tens of thousands lost power yesterday in France as a strong low with a defined convergence tail extending south and to the west is coming, doing its best to capture the precipitable water, but the wind is likely the bigger story, as that pressure there is one of the beasts on Earth right now. One of the reasons I showed these stuck lows in the Pacific for weeks was because I knew their warm moisture drive to Alaska was leaving the west coast in the dry. But remember folks, those stuck lows broke and headed for the coastline. The snow dump out west has been very significant for 48 hours and, as the pressure cells shift and extend onto our land, guess what? We get the rain, the snow, and even the potential for flooding and large precipitation totals. That's why you watch the pressure. Many know that we took an interplanetary shockwave yesterday. I had contemplated it being the coronal hole stream, but now I think we may need another day to wait for that one. This is the CME that I believe NASA and NOAA had overestimated. Indeed, we managed to take some instability, but no geomagnetic storm conditions yet. Still got the wake to go through, though. Flaring has been nothing burgers since the ramp last week. The sunspots departing still look like monsters, but that's why we don't judge books by their cover. Incomers, total disappointment thus far. I ignore ye for now, incoming spots. That's our magnetic portal to the sun right there, sitting alongside Venus's connection, according to ISWA. It'd be great if the 700% increase in M6 seismicity during this uptick ended now with the coronal hole exiting as well. We still got Jupiter opposing Venus. Shots of our star and the current Earth conditions to close. Eyes open. No fear. It's 6.20 a.m. Eastern Time and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.